So, guys, this video is about um, using the M1 MacBook Air um, for music. And um, I have bought the MacBook Air for like three, four days now. And um, I've done all kinds of tests, you know. Um, and I think, uh, at least for me, it's important to uh, report um, because I'm a musician and using, uh, you know, software and uh, digital or audio workstations and plugins and all this um, extensively. Um, for me, it was important to understand how um, the M1 MacBook Air is um, doing for uh, music and especially because I'm a live musician, I'm using all kinds of gears for live music. How does the M1 MacBook Air um, compete uh, for for live music situations? So using you know uh, main stage or uh, contact or this kind of of um, tools to really be able to play uh, with an extremely good live quality um, of sounds, um, but. Um, also in the studio's uh, situation and setup where you you need all kinds of uh, plugins also and a lot of more power to to do your mixing then and so for me it was interesting to find out uh, after having seen all these videos about how performant and and um, you know extensively um, benchmark good benchmarks that that the m1 uh, gathered through the internet to find out um, how, how does it look for me in my situation so of course you know I did the benchmarks I could kind of like you know I will come back to that but basically I could confirm whatever I've read and seen and looked and heard and everything in, in the in the internet um, but uh, mostly what I've seen is about you know, video editing um, and this kind of things. And I was interested to know really um, how does it do for me as a live musician? How can I use it? What is working? What is not working? And especially because up to now I was extensively using my iPad Pro um, with all kinds of iOS applications. I was wondering because the M1 is known for um, being compatible with uh, iOS apps, I was wondering um, how do the the fantastic iOS apps that I have on my iPad, like you know the Cork module or um, you know the Ravensburger 275 or uh, the uh, Neo Soul uh, electro pianos, how do they? do how do they work and how do they perform and on the m1 okay so whenever it comes to <clears throat> running ios apps uh, music apps or whatever apps anyway uh, on the m1 um, basically the procedure the normal procedure for apps that have been allowed by the developers to be seen and to be installed on on your mac m1 uh, is basically to go to your, um, you know, to your app store in uh, your account, and then uh, to see um, what 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 uh, apps you have already installed. So let's do that. I will launch the uh, app store I have logged in, and uh, as my user, I see my uh, app. Typically, my macOS apps. You see, I have main stage. I have these different um, apps for the um, benchmarks, so the AGA or the Blackmagic Disk Speed, and so on and so forth. The Geek Cinebench, Geekbench, all this. The interesting thing is that I can go here, and I didn't see it in the very beginning, but you can go here, and now in the App Store for your Mac, you can now go to iPhone and iPad apps. And that's interesting because now you see all the apps that basically <clears throat> uh, you have uh, bought or downloaded uh, in your 
store account. So you see some stuff is automatically available. For example, this Afron late Latin drum machine or there's another one, the funk machine, or for example, Loopy, you see, that's very interesting. So the Loopy is already in because I bought it for the iPad. I have it if I change uh, to, to iPhone and iPad in my app store, I have Loopy available. Interestingly, also, you see that LumaFusion is available here. So basically what you do is, you know, if you have an app which is uh, allowed for the Mac, you just download it, right? So you you just, um, uh, that's what I did here. I just downloaded it and, and installed it. And um, basically that's, that's all you have to do. So if I go to applications, that's basically all the apps from my iPad that are available and running on my Mac and that's absolutely incredible. I mean it's it's just amazing. Of <laughs> the interesting part is what happens to all the others which are not seen here in the App Store. So for example, you know the Afro Latin you see here Afro Latin is here. But for example, look at this interesting Cubase. Cubase doesn't I have Cubase on my iPad obviously but it doesn't appear here. So basically Cubase is, is not available through the standard um, mechanism of app stores. So how do you get the other um, apps like Cubase? How do you get this on your laptop? That's what I will show you now. So basically to get the other apps that are not automatically available on your App Store account for your Mac running iOS apps, you have to have a tool called iMazing. And basically you can just, you know, in Google type iMazing and then you will find this iMazing.com um, website. And here you can have a free download either for Mac and interestingly enough for Windows and you can just download it and install it. As you can see here, the iMazing is running even um, natively. So iMazing has been ported to um, the M1. Anyway, once you have installed um, iMazing, what you have to do is to plug in your uh, iPad with uh, um, a USB uh, cable. You connect it to your Mac and then basically um, once you have that it will appear here in iMazing and you know you see all the uh, different objects that are on your iPad. So in our interesting part here is this here. So you go to apps and then you go here to manage apps and basically now you see here all your apps installed on your iPad. Then you go here to library and that's where it's really interesting because uh, let's take an example um, of um, Cubases. You see now Cubases appears here and uh, you see here um, a green uh, check mark because I have done this already before this video. Let's take one that I didn't install yet, so the Neo Soul, which is a great e-piano. So the thing is that you have now uh, to download it. So once you have logged in into uh, your um, Apple ID and once you have downloaded um, your app, so let's let's take the example of this one which I have already downloaded. So what you do is you right click and then you uh, make an export of the IPA file. So let's do that, export it. And then uh, what you do, you just double click on that and it, as you see, it will install it in your Apple 
application of the Mac OS of the Big Sur. Um, so whenever we go to, once this is finished, whenever we go to the application, um, you will find the Neo Soul. So let's keep the installer here for the moment. But if I go to applications, I will find my Neo Soul key, which is here. So let's move that one to my iOS. Here we are. And that's what I did basically for all the applications. All right. And the magic is now that now I have this Neo Soul keys installed. I can just double click as I would for any Mac OS app and it just starts up. And guess what? I can just play it. It, it's it's just amazing um, you know you have all the settings that you you have usually um, you have the output that you can select obviously if you have more than one uh, you can de define which outputs you want to have you can define the buffer size which is very interesting because now you know, with a more powerful uh, M1 chip, you could maybe lower your latency by, by selecting smaller samples uh, buffer and so on and so forth. So basically, that's it, guys. I mean, it's crazy. Now you have a Neo Soul Keys, which is a great app. Uh, you run it under your Mac OS. Um, let's take another example. One um, which I use a lot is is the you ha, you know for example the im1 so this is from korg um, you can just start it and here you are i mean <laughs> it's just amazing you know you can play um uh so basically that's uh that's how how this this works um it's it's that simple so not all the music apps that I have uh, downloaded through iMazing were actually working. All these, you know, um, w are working. So uh, you have Gadget, or co again, for, from Cork. You know, you have Module, which is a fantastic sound module um, that you can also play, you know. For example, I have different sound packs that I have bought. And uh, when you log in into your account, you can then download uh, these um, packs and you have them all at your disposal in your um, iOS app. So that basically that is now an iOS app running on the Mac OS. Um, and let's have a look at the monitor to see uh, our app. So um, we should find it here somewhere now. Yes, we find it here. And look at this, interesting. I mean, it's an apple. So it is an ARM, uh, ARM app compiled for the M1 chip, but basically it's an iOS app. But as the Apple iOS um, devices, typically my iPad Pro is running under A chips, A10 for my uh, um, iPad. Um, it's also running as an ARM app in iOS. Uh, and so that is the magic. It's it's just absolutely amazing. You could argue why would you, in first place, use you know um, iOS apps in Mac. I mean, you have all these fantastic apps that you can uh, use. For example, um, you know um, you have Main Stage. Uh, you have all these fancy apps. I'm using a lot, you know, the native instruments, contact, um, 
instruments or for example you know the um, uh, key lab so why would you use ios well guys you would use them because first of all they are great apps they sound really absolutely top professional i mean of course you don't have that many gigabytes also for example you know um, if you look at this um, um, for example this uh, colossus piano for example this one here uh, this one i don't know if we see the size here but this has a uh, this has a library of several gigabytes, I think 45, if I'm not wrong. So, I mean, these iOS apps are top professional, top-notch apps that, that are really fantastic sounding. Of course, the, I mean, you know, the intuitive um, usage with, uh, with um, hard screen, you don't have that here. And so you have a little bit, um, less comfort with with the apps uh, using the mouse but uh, you know for the most of it uh, for typically for music apps um, that that's that's good enough so you know it's it's just it's just amazing and don't forget guys iOS apps are a lot cheaper than um, apps uh, for Mac, for example, this IM1 or the ProFed or the iWave stations, they exist, their counterpart exists, or also the Cork Gadget for that matter exists for as desktop apps, but they are a lot more expensive than, than for iOS. So not only can you use fantastic sounding apps in your Mac OS, but you can also buy them for a lot less money than you would if you bought you know the counterpart of macOS um, you know full-blown um, PC apps so um, yeah that's basically it how you can make um, music apps run under your Mac M1 Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please feel free to give a thumbs up. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.